This will be a step-by-step -step video on doing a Toyota Tundra front brake job on SR5 4x4 from 2000 to 2006. This video is intended for those who have never changed front brake pads and rotors or have never changed them out on a four piston caliper system like this one. Be sure to watch the entire video to the end as I'll provide helpful tips to make this job go a whole lot smoother and with less costly mistakes. The topics that will be covered in this video on doing a Toyota Tundra front brake job. First is how to release the rigid brake line without disconnecting it, removing the anti-rattle spring, using the pads to compress the caliper pistons, then removing the pads, removing the caliper and how to hang it up safely, removing the rotor, then putting it all back together, and then I'm going to go over some summary of the tips that I've, I've mentioned throughout this video, and then you should be able to do a complete brake job without any problems. In order to take this caliper off, it doesn't work like a lot of them. This is a four piston caliper, which means it's got pistons on this side and pistons on this side. And it's got a steel line, which means you can't just take it loose and flex it. You, for this, you do not have to remove the steel line. You do not have to break into the hydraulic system. You can leave the line completely on. This last person that worked on this unbolt, tried to unbolt this bracket because I guess they were not thinking that all you got to do is just take this clip off and with it with it not bolted solid it's hard to do but you got to basically put a screwdriver or a pair of pliers make a little if it's real rusted like most all these Toyota tenders are you may need to um, put a little uh, penetrating oil or something on if it's really stuck but you just pull this it's open at the bottom you just pull this clip up and allows the hydraulic line to drop in and then it's free. That normally doesn't happen if I have my other hand on it, but trying to hold the camera and do that at the same time. I'm sure you get people are going to complain about it being shaky, but it was a little bit hard to do one-handed. But that's how you actually release that. You don't. You can try to take this bracket off. There's one bolt back here, and if it can come loose, you can. It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. And if it can come off without this bolt breaking, but uh, after 20 years, these things uh, freeze up and they're, they they normally break and then you have to drill them out like I did the other side. But this right here is all it needs to be able to have the caliper free enough to be able to move around to pull it off. Before going and buying your pads, you gotta know there's two different size pads for this uh, Tundra. But it's based on years from 2000 2003 or about mid to mid 2003 the pads are 4.7 inches uh, wide and then from 2003 or rather late 2003 to 2006 there are 5.3 inches and you can you can measure this you don't have to take the pads all, all apart and everything to get to it all you got to do is just pull the wheel off and look at the caliper and you can just measure the opening because it I mean it, it is a significant difference so it's going to be basically almost four and three quarter or over five inches. And that's going to tell you before you go buy your pads. Channel lock pliers and just kind of compress it. This process here completely eliminates the need of a, comp a compressor for a caliper pistons. And this works just as great and as easy and it, it stays once you get them all compressed. And as you see, when you push one, one side, then the other side goes. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a screwdriver in here.
what you're looking for is to make sure that the pistons look like they're all the way flat against the rubber boot that's right there. A lot of times they have cotter keys right here. This has a big straight line pin. Get that one pulled. Be sure to keep up with what you're doing. It might be a good idea to get a metal uh, magnet cup to put these in because that's soft will find to get lost. Just gonna try and these through. I just got a little tapping hammer. You don't want to use a big hammer or anything. See how I pulled it off? And you can see if you look to the side, this V is lower than the sides. You wouldn't want to try to put it on this way because then this would end up rubbing the rotor. So. See what I'm doing. I'm kind of putting this chisel just just to catch it there. Knock it out. Inspect your pin to make sure it's not bent. If you're not really sure about rotating it, you can always put it on a bench and roll it and see if it, it looks like it's going up down the middle. This is severely rusted, so it needs to be wire brushed. Maybe a little bit uh, every cloth to go before I go back together with it. Now you just slip your pads out. If you're just going to be doing pads, all you have to do is put the pads back in and then reverse it, but you want to clean your pins up, make sure it's be best if you get new hardware clips and stuff. Um, I'll put the links down in the description for all this stuff. I got Bosch pads, and it's a nice set because it comes with the hardware. Every, all the clips I pulled off, it comes with all, with all of them, so we're good there. So what you want to do before you even try to start putting pads back on, is inspect and make sure this is the old pad this is the new pad make sure that they look the same same width same height now these other pads come with all uh, these shims right here I will probably put them back on it's more likely they were factory because it doesn't come with the pads you could probably do without them but I'm gonna put them on anyways after inspection of the uh, anti-squill shims, the ones with the louvers, when, in this diagram here, the inner anti-squill shim, uh, both of them were rusted, and one of them, the louvers were rusted completely through and weren't even functioning anymore. And you don't have to have this louvered one, you just need to have an anti-squill shim. And the pad actually comes with one on the back, but I went ahead and used the extra one uh, just to help keep the uh, uh, squilling down or the, the screeching that sometimes pads will make. we need to do now is to remove the, the caliper and up here barely can see it in the camera view there is where the brake line because you notice that on this one the brake line is steel that goes to it and then you got a bracket that bolts to the spindle and on this one somebody had broke the bolt off because I guess they didn't know that you could take this clip out right here to uh, release 
the rubber line from this bracket and that allows it to move around. You just, that'll allow it to fall in, move around. That way you can take the caliper off without having to take the line loose. There's no reason to break the uh, end of the hydraulic system to change out uh, a rotor. There is a bolt here. It'll be there two bolt, two big bolts that's furthest in. And sure, it's these two inner bolts. Do not do any of the other bolts because that takes the caliper itself apart. Just to make sure it's these two inner bolts here that you take loose to remove the caliper from the spindle. That is closest to the CV shaft or to the center of the, of the spindle. The heads of these bolts are uh, take a 17 millimeter socket. Normally I would use an impact gun and uh, remove these bolts because they, they're torqued about 120 foot pounds. For example, I'm working on the driver's side, so what I would do is I would turn the wheel to the left. That way the bolts are exposed and I just use an impact gun to uh, run them out. However, for this video I just wanted to show using hand tools because not everybody's going to have an impact gun. are from Auto Shack, not AutoZone, but Auto Shack. It's a, it's a company that sells aftermarket performance rotors. Um, it, you, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's got a, a film of oil stuff that's to keep it from rusting. You can't leave that on there. I mean, the pads will wear it off, but I would not chance that. I would degrease it and get rid of this coating of this stuff. All you gotta do is just slip the new one on. These are really nice rotors. They're painted black, other than where the uh, pads are on, which keeps it from rusting. I'll just throw a lug nut on. Just put it on by hand. All it does is just kind of keep it in place so it's not flopping around. And that way now you can set the caliper back up there. Because remember, you don't put the pads on, on this brake job, you don't put the pads on the caliper. You set the caliper back on, bolt it down, and then you put the pads, slide them in place and put the pins in. For the caliper bolts, I always put a little dab of a blue thread locker on there. It's not, uh, it's not the high strength, it's about medium strength. That's about all you're gonna need. I mean, you do want to get them back off one day. I mean, if you have the red and that's what you want to use, that's fine. I mean, it is designed to break free once on the branch, but it doesn't even require it. I just do always put them on there just as a security thing, just to make sure. Because when you do breaks for somebody else, you are liable. back on and you kind of just kind of fill around until they grab some threads, put your bolt in, wiggle it around, thread it. Once you got them up there, just roll, <coughs> since you put a new rotor on, just to ensure that everything's good. Just move your rotor to make sure everything's clear, nothing's dragging before you put your pads up there.
slide your pads in. Before installing your caliper pins, be sure that they're clean and that um, they're not bent. These were not bent. These were actually in decent shape. They just had a lot of surface rust on them, so I wire brushed them. Then I used some, I mounted them in the vise and then emery cloth them. And then I'm going to apply a little caliper grease to them. I'm going to put a little caliper grease on the pins. The anti-rattle spring should go on the pin first, and it doesn't really matter. I'm just putting these in to get it lined up for the bottom one, it, and then I'll go back and put the rattle spring on the top pin before I uh, put the clips in. Before you can put your rest of your pin, your top pin in, you gotta put this uh, spring. What it does, it kind of keeps these from rattling and. Kind of stabilize a little bit. I mean, they'll work without it, but just if I can get my hand there where you can see it at the camera, you just kind of get your pin halfway there, you get it kind of looped on it, and then compress it enough to get your pin all the way through. It goes in a little hole right there in the pad. And this is not, this cannot be down touching on the rotor of the pads. Now we can put the other clip in. And that's how you do a Toyota Tundra front brake job. I said just remember sure to get your clips right. Make sure this is pointed up and not down. I showed you how this works. Just remember that this little catch in the middle points outward. To kind of catch it from coming loose. Unless you want to use cotter pins. Your kit may come with cotter pins that go on the end of those uh, slide pins. And you don't have to get uh, slotted rotors. We just decided to up, uh, upgrade the braking system on this and go with slotted rotors. But that's pretty much it. Slip on rotor. And normally you would just take this little clip loose to loosen up your um, uh, hose and steel line and just, just enough to flex your caliper off to put the new rotor on. Before buying your pads, ensure what width they are. They're either going to be 4.7 or 5.3. As mentioned earlier, you can just take the wheel off and measure the opening in the caliper just to see how wide it is. It's obvious it's either going to be 4 and 3 quarters, or roughly, or roughly around there, or it's going to be a little over 5 inches. So make sure they're your pad width before you order your pads. Before you do anything, take this steel brake line uh, clip off so that the way the line can fall through the hole and is loose. Because if you forget and you take that caliper loose and you try to set it to the side or whatever you're going to do with it or just drop it, it will bend and mess up that line possibly even break it. Plus there is no need whatsoever to unscrew the brake line and break into the hydraulic system to have to bleed it. Just remove the clip and it will give you all the freedom you need to, to hang the caliper off to the side. Before taking the brakes apart, look at it, understand it, and you know, with today's technology, just use your phone and take a picture of it. That way, you know, if you have any questions, this brake assembly is pretty simple, so it shouldn't really be hard to put together. Plus, there's plenty of pictures here on the website everywhere, but take a picture or just, you know, or just as you take things apart, make notes of how, how it came apart so you can put it back together.
be sure to hang the caliper because if you let that caliper hang by the steel line, that caliper is so heavy, it will bend and possibly even break that steel line. So as I pointed out, you disconnect that clip and let the hose uh, and line release from the bracket. It doesn't come out of it. It just moves around, but it allows the caliper to be able to be moved without hurting the line and just get you a, a brake caliper uh, hook or mechanics wire or even a coat hanger or if you have to string or tie a tie strap but just tie it to the uh, to the cool over uh, shock or anything that you can find near, just near it you don't need to move it very far just enough to be able to pull the rotor off it's always a good idea to put some anti-squeal compound on the back of the brake pads and since this vehicle has um, a couple of shims per pad you can actually spray it in between each in other words spray the back of the pad spray the inner shim and spray the inside of the outer shim and spray the outside of the outer shim and then put them in there and maybe it's a little overkill i prefer the spray over the um, gel that uh, a lot of times it'll come in a set of brake pads and uh, you can pick them up almost at any auto parts store just sitting up on the counter but the spray is my favorite it applies on thinner and it seems to last longer. The gel seems to always um, uh, heat up and then goop up. So I prefer the spray, but it's whatever you prefer. But be sure to put some on there to keep the, the squill down. Before you put the caliper back on, it would be a good idea to wire brush the mounting points and uh, all the bolts, which pretty much are only two. But if you have a bench grinder with a wire brush on it, that would be great. But if not, you can use a hand brush, brush your bolt, all the rust off the bolts, and then use a uh, thread file to chase the threads. Unless you have a tap and die set or a set of uh, thread chasers that's that size. Um, but clean up your bolts and then uh, clean up the mounting points on the uh, caliper. And I would you know, clean on both sides, basically where the bolts smash against the caliper and under on the both sides of the spindle and on the uh, inside of the caliper that actually touches it. Once you get that clean, then when you get the caliper up there, because you could do it with it off, but it's just a lot easier once you build it up there to take a little small wire brush and run it up and down where the pads sit in there. Now, if, you're, if your caliper isn't really rusty, then you don't have to really worry so much about it, but a lot of these Toyota Tundras, uh, I've noticed doing uh, Toyota Tundra brake jobs, they, uh, they seem to be a lot of them that are just really excessively rusty, but do sure, be sure to do some uh, prep work and clean and stuff. That way everything bolts up solid. And, and uh, I also use Loctite on the bolts. You don't have to. It's not required to. I just do it because uh, I'm work, usually working on somebody else's car and I want to take every precaution to make sure no bolts come loose You know, going down the road and that I'm liable for damages. This anti-rattle spring is simple yet complex a lot of people ask me questions that when you know that they try to do this brake job themselves and get confused on how the spring goes first off you have to stick it up there and slide the pin through the little loop that way it doesn't come out because it can't go one direction because due to the caliper being in the way and then the other way it's going to catch on the wire but you'll see in this diagram those little ends of the spring that point out they go in the holes in the pad there's on each pad there's two holes you know at the top it just it lines right up and goes right in those holes and it keeps it in place you need to make sure that that loop that sticks up it has to be pointing up if you let that thing point down if you put the spring on backwards and it points down it's going to get into the rotor um, if you just look at this picture here you'll see how the little arms the side little part of the springs sit on basically on top of the edge of the pads and that's how it has to go and that'll make the loop stick outward and the other question I get is, does the spring go to the bottom of the caliper or does it go to the top of the caliper? That actually depends on what year it was made and actually what, what in the, which end of the caliper the last mechanic put it on. It doesn't really matter. All that spring does is just kind of keep the pads, when you're going down the road and you don't have your foot on the brake, sometimes the pads can rattle or chatter. So that spring just kind of keeps the tension on it. It's very, very, very soft tension. If you could put two on there, for that matter, but it doesn't really matter if it goes on the top or the bottom. But I mean, my my recommendation is if you take your wheel off and you see that springs on the top, keep it on the top. If you see it on the bottom, keep it on the bottom. And and it's not that crucial.
I've also been asked about putting a nut on the rotor like this. As you see, I, I took a, a nut, a pretty thick nut, and uh, definitely bigger than the stud, so it could just slide over it and put the nut against it. But not everybody's going to have that. I was asking you to use washers. My recommendation is try running the nut up there without uh, putting a washer or uh, an extra nut on it to space it and see if it'll tighten up on the uh, rotor. However, do not tighten it with... Uh, anything like don't tighten, tighten it with a uh, wrench or anything like that because if you jam it down you may mess up the threads but just use an oversized nut or some washers for a spacer or try it without that should be fine even though this is all about doing a, a tender brake job there's other things you can inspect while you have it apart and most people kind of Usually they're in a hurry, or they've got to get got to get it done, or sometimes they're just not thinking about the other stuff. But just in this picture alone, I see several things you need to inspect. One is the CV boots. This is just the outer one, but once you're looking at the outer one, you need to go ahead and uh, get a flashlight or get up underneath it and look at the inner CV boot and make sure they're not split, uh, throwing grease out of them. The next thing you look for is the coilover shock. Right there is the bolt, and that is a bushing that's inside of that and those bushings do go out and of course it rattles or knocks when you're driving it. Also go ahead and just look further up and see if you see any oil coming out of the uh, shock absorber itself. If it's leaking oil then it's bad you're going to, have to replace that. Then another thing in this picture as you can see right there the sway arm bushing and I actually I'm replacing it at the same time I'm doing this brake job because when I pull the wheel off behold the uh, bushings are gone. Another important item is to check that brake hose. The hose running to the steel line until it goes to the caliper. Look at it and make sure it has no cracks or it's uh, seeping brake fluid, make sure it's dry. And then two other things you can't clearly see in this picture. One, you can just barely catch it, but down there at the bottom of the caliper, you can see the lower control arm bushing. Make sure the boot isn't uh, cracked or grease is coming out of it. And then that control arm, look at the bushings where it goes to the frame and make sure that they don't look like they're uh, chewed up or spitting out. And just do a generalized inspection. Anytime you pull the wheel off and you can see all this stuff that's exposed, take a good look at it and inspect it. Well, that concludes on how to do a Toyota Tundra front brake job. <clears throat> if you have any opinions, if you feel that you know of any other tricks or something that can help others or correct me in this video or anything, be sure to leave me a, a comment and I'll respond to it. I usually do. So you tell me, do you think there's an easier way to do this brake job? I'd love to hear your uh, comments and your opinions about it. For me, this is not over. I've still got to do the rear brakes, which are drum on this one, and I'm replacing all the hardware, the, the wheel cylinders, the whole nine yards. So, but that's going to be another, another video. So always stay tuned and check back because I'm always doing other things on the same vehicles. If you did find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and always check back because I'm always working on something crazy. See you in the next one.